Well, thank you, choir and orchestra, for leading us this morning. They're not finished yet, and I won't be long today, I promise. But we have been in our Advent journey, and we've been lighting candles each week as a representation uh, of our waiting and hoping in God's promises. In week one, we lit the candle of hope. We have a hope that comes from God. In week two, we lit the candle of peace, reminding us that God comes to bring us peace, everlasting peace. Today, we light our pink candle. It's the candle of joy. I think it's fitting that today, a day our choir and orchestra are leading us in our time of worship to be lighting uh, the candle of joy. And you say, oh, brother pastor, don't you see what's going on in the world today? Don't, don't you, how in the world can we be singing? How can we have joy in a time like this, in a season like this? But you know, the early church, they, they didn't, that was a given how bad the world was. That was just the way, that was just reality. They weren't focusing on how bad the world is, how much evil there was in the world. They said, look who come into the world. Jesus came into the world. God came to be among us. And so in our pain, in our suffering, in our hurt, we can truly be saying joy to the world. You know, God makes promises. God makes promises. Do you believe God's promises? Do you believe God's promises? As a dad, I hear, but dad, you promised. You promised. Candy after church. Popcorn at the movie, fixing our toy train set, going out and playing one more jump on the trampoline. But dad, you promised. I'm not a perfect father. But God is a God, and Christmas tells us that God is a God who keeps his promises. God is a God that is faithful to his promises. You know, in the Bible, the, the people of Israel had been waiting a long time. God had promised them a Messiah. God had promised that he would come. And they'd been waiting. In fact, God had been silent for 400 years. No word. Not a peep. The prophets were silent. The people were waiting on those promises to be fulfilled. How are you at waiting? How, how, how do you like to wait? Anybody like to wait? I didn't think so. I don't like to wait either. In fact, think about some of the most frustrating places to wait. In line at a certain very large grocery store in town. In line at the airport security line or whatever they call that line that they do to you these days. In line for the restroom, in line when I was a teenager for, at the DPS office for my driver's license. We, we spend a lot of our life waiting on certain promises to be fulfilled. And really quickly this morning, I want us to look at two Bible characters in the Christmas narrative that were waiting on God's promise. And I want to learn very quickly three things. I want to talk about three things that we can learn as we wait on God's promise to be fulfilled in our life. In Luke chapter 2, we find the story of Anna and Simeon. They had both been waiting, waiting on the promised Messiah. And here's, here's the, the reality for us today is that we have a choice. We have a choice in how we wait for God's promise to be fulfilled in our life. Anna and Simeon had a choice in how they waited for God's promise to be fulfilled in their life. Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. Verse 26, here's the promise. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. 
For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. God's promise was fulfilled. Can you imagine what that was like for Simeon? He'd had that promise that he would get to see the Messiah and to be able to wrap that baby up in his arms and hold him and know that God's promise had been fulfilled. And and then there's Anna. In verse 36, she was very old, Scripture tells us. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem, waiting on a promise. A, A promise is a statement telling someone that you will definitely do something or that something will happen in the future. We make promises. We don't always live up to our promises, but God always lives up to his promises. And when you look into the scripture and you, and you see how Anna and Simeon heard the promises of God, number one, they waited actively. They waited actively. We wait actively for God's promise to be fulfilled. Anna and Simeon were faithful. They were, scripture says they were righteous and they were, they were devout. They continued going to the temple courts. They, they were getting older. They had to wonder, had, had God forgotten the promise? Did, did we miss here? No, they, they, we're just going to mail it in. We're just going to kind of check out. We're just going to sit in our recliner and, and not do anything. They, they, they could have made those choices, but they continued to go to the temple courts. They, they continued to be faithful to their Lord. They continued to keep their eye on the promise that God had made. Christmas tells us that God is faithful in keeping his promises. We also learn that as we wait for God's promises to be fulfilled, as we wait for the second advent of Christ, we wait actively, not passively. We wait actively and we stay focused on those good promises that that God gives to us, that that we keep our focus on those promises. And and sometimes in, in the challenges we face in life, the ups and the downs, we have to cling to that promise. And that promise sometimes is is all we have. But waiting on God's promises is a requirement for hope. Waiting on God's promises is a requirement for hope. Romans chapter 8 verse 24 tells us this. Now in this hope, talking about the hope of Christ, we were saved. But hope that is seen is not hope. Because who hopes for what he sees? You see, it's in our hope. We have to stay focused on those promises. And we we keep waiting, but we wait actively. We're proactive. We're not passive. We're proactive in following the way of Jesus and and living out the, the way he told us to live and entrusting our future, entrusting our present to God's good care. Hope. Sounds good to me. Does it sound good to you? But waiting, not so much. Waiting on COVID to go away. Waiting on a doctor's appointment that you have coming up. Waiting on uh, the disease to go away. Waiting on the divisiveness and the ugliness and the vitriol to stop. Waiting on stories of scandal to quit unfolding. Waiting on days of unrest to cease. We spend so much of our life waiting. And the truth is, as Christians, we wait, but we wait with hope. We wait actively. We wait based on the promise of Jesus Christ and God sending his son into to the world to redeem and to reconcile and to restore the world and that is the story that we've been called into and that is the reason that we can sing in a challenging season is because Jesus God in flesh and blood came to be among us God's promises his perfect promises have been fulfilled at the exact perfect time for you and me to follow him and to trust him with our life. That's what Anna and Simeon learned. They'd heard the promise. 
I'm sure people had to be saying to them, hey, you're getting up in your years. I'm not sure. Are you sure you heard that right? They stayed true to the promise God called them. And they got to see at just the perfect time God's promise fulfilled. Do you believe God's promise? Do you believe God's promise? Are you looking this morning for light in your darkness? Are you searching for the truth? This Christmas season, this Advent season, God wants to make your hope real. He wants to make your hope real, that his promises have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And when you're waiting, and when you're waiting actively, and you're waiting focused on God's promise, you're in really good company for God to begin to show you something you've never seen before, for God to use you in ways that, that you never imagined. Because when you wait in the Lord, you're actually in really good company. So we wait, we wait actively, we wait focused on God's promise and we know that our hope has been made real in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do you believe God's promise? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the message that we have heard this morning. A message we all need to hear A message of promise, a message of hope, a message of joy, a message of reconciliation and restoration. Thank you that you keep your promises. Lord, for anybody in this room today, for anybody listening by way of radio or watching on live stream today, that's struggling to believe that promise, I pray that your Holy Spirit would draw near and bring comfort and assurance. For any that are listening today that don't believe that promise of God's love, of your love that's been revealed to us in Christ Jesus our Lord, we pray that today would be the day to put their trust in your faithful promise in Jesus Christ our Lord. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.